Hi, thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about cloud basics. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning uh, and rather than deep dive into the technicality of cloud and all the different aspects and whatnot, we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to talk about the basics of cloud. This is going to be great for those of you that are unfamiliar with cloud, uh, the industry as a whole, uh, not understanding quite what cloud is or when you hear about it. And this is going to help you uh, when you're having those discussions, at least be able to follow along with what's what's happening, what's going on. Uh, and what you guys are, are actually talking about. So if we start with the real basics of what is the cloud? Um, now, here's a real technical kind of, uh, you know, it's a practice of storing regular used computer data on multiple servers that can be accessed through the internet. But really, what is the cloud? And what the cloud is, is it's a way for you to transform your business. It's a way for you to change how your business works with IT, works with some of the technicality around IT and how you can deliver different services uh, that you couldn't do before. So what makes it cloud? Cloud gets used quite a bit in the industry. There's loads of uh, organizations that all you know, claim to be cloud. It's cloud everything, it's the new buzzword, but there's a few key things that really are necessary for it to be a true cloud vendor, a true cloud environment. And the first one is self-service. So while you may buy a managed service, you may have somebody that works and, and covers that for you, you can still do your own provisioning. You can monitor it yourself, you can provision your servers, um, you can provision all of the technical, you know, the networks and all that yourselves if you choose to do so. Elasticity. So this is the idea that you're able to seamlessly grow up and down um, to the scale that you need uh, at the time and the speed that you need to do it. So rather than waiting weeks and months to, to, do, to grow that scale, uh, you're able to do it in, in seconds and you're able to move it up and down as need be. Um, and that allows you then these, this, this idea of utility economics to pay as you use. So when it goes up, you pay for it, but when it comes back down, you're not paying for that, that full environment, you're only paying for what you're actually using. And this utility based economics is really unique to the cloud. You're only paying for what you're using. You're not paying for if it's turned off um, or if you've deleted it or if it's no longer in your services. This idea of near infinite scale. So I need to grow servers. I don't want to be waiting for months and days and weeks for my IT to build those servers. I want them available immediately. Cloud gives you that capability to spin up the servers when you need them, as many as you need. I say near infinite. I'm sure you could hit the numbers pretty quickly if you started going into tens of thousands of servers, uh, but realistically, you wouldn't be doing that. So as you're spanning, spanning those servers out and, and spinning them up, um, they're available immediately for you and able to spin up. And it's a shared resource. So the idea is that it's coming out of a pool. Um, it's not a specific server. Now, most of the cloud vendors have now moved to offer you specific servers if you need to um, for compliance. But the idea, the general idea around the cloud is that it's a shared service. It's a big, huge pool. You're carving out what you need for that, and that's it. The rest of it is being used by someone else, and you don't care what specific hardware is being used. And that brings us to the commoditization of it. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of, of kit it is, what brand it is, how it works. It does, you don't care about any of that. All you care about is that you're paying for a specific uh, environment and you're getting that environment. So if you look at the different options for cloud, um, it's, you'll hear these kind of banded around. So IaaS or infrastructure as a service, PaaS or platform as a service, and SaaS or software as a service. Uh, and you'll hear this kind of banded around, especially by IT, um, especially by the different vendors, uh, what's available uh, when you're looking at cloud. And we're gonna break that down a little bit more so that those of you that are unfamiliar with it will have a better understanding. So this is this is built as, as pizza as a service. So this is built with the idea to, to get your, your head wrapped around what people are talking about. And then we'll show you the specifics, the more technical side after this. But this is just to get, get you to the point where you kind of understand what, what people are saying when they're talking about the different environments. So your traditional on-premise uh, or you make your pizza at home, uh, as you can see the list there, all of those things you're responsible for, you're paying for. So, you know, the dining room table is yours, the soda is yours, the tomato sauce you have to go and buy, all that stuff you buy, you make, it's all up to you. If you move up to infrastructure as a service or here the take and bank, then some of those responsibilities then go to a third party uh, or to, an, to, to the restaurant. So they make the pizza for you, you bring it home, you use your own kit to, to then make that pizza but the pizza itself was made for you offsite. So the dough, the sauce, the, the toppings, all of that 
was ha was paid for by someone else or handled by someone else uh, and put together for you. Uh, and then all you're doing is basically putting, uh, bringing it home and cooking it. Platform as a service, or you're going to delivery. Now all of a sudden, all of that's taken care of except for the table itself that you're going to eat it at and your sodas. Um, but everything else, the pizza itself is being made by the company. Uh, it's, it was the pizza was made, the toppings were put on, it was cooked. All of that was handled by them. And then the last one is software as a service, or if you were to dine out at a pizza restaurant, then everything is then provided by the, the organization uh, and you then don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, and that then means that uh, all, your, all you care about is eating the pizza. That's the cloud computing model uh, as based around uh, pizza as a service. But obviously you can't really talk about pizza as a service within your organization when IT is talking about moving to the cloud. So just so you're familiar with some of the acronyms and what that means for IT and what they're talking about to relate it back to the pizza as a service model, I'll show you the, the more technical side. So you have your on-premise environment, that's, that hasn't changed. That's your data center, that's your physical uh, kit that you buy. So you know uh, your servers, your storage, your networking, all the cables, the air conditioning units, all of that in that building, that's what it covers. You then got infrastructure as a service. Now, this is the first layer of the cloud. This is what this does is this uh, allows third parties, organizations to offer you some of that hardware cost um, and to remove that from your costs. So you're basically just renting uh, that physical kit rather than buying. This is a great way for you to um, span out really quickly. Um, if you've got a, uh, a variable around the hardware, so you have certain times of the year where you might have more traffic or more need for, for infrastructure, more need for power, more need for those things, uh, then other times of year you're able to span those out um, and rent that kit for when you need it and then obviously get rid of it when you don't and save that cost. So what infrastructure as a service means basically is that it's uh, it's allowing you to buy some kit uh, and rent it. So, so you're renting that effectively per month. Uh, there is a couple other options, but essentially per month. Uh, and that's the, the actual hardware itself. So they take the compute, the networking and the storage. Um, so your servers, your storage, your networking, your cables, your heating and cooling, all of that then becomes their problem to deal with. And all you deal with is what, you know, what the virtual machines, so, uh, and the operating systems and the applications that you're running internally. The next layer is the platform layer. And what they're there saying is, is that they'll take everything up to um, the operating system and the runtime of that environment. And all you need to manage is the application and the data for that application. So this is great for those that, uh, if you think around things like um, databases like SQL, where Microsoft will take that entire environment for you. They'll manage it, all of the updates, making sure it's up to, you know, that it's got all its patches and it's very secure. They'll manage all of that for you. They'll guarantee you a runtime, so you'll get a, a, a service level agreement, an SLA of 99.96. Uh, and the that's then the applications that you're running on top are then all that you're worrying about. And this is a great way for IT then to focus on the applications that are important to the business and able to grow that and maintain that and stay on top of that for the business and not have to worry about things like the back end systems and maintaining those systems to maintain those applications. The last is software as a service. And this is great for applications that are quite standard in the industry. So I'll use Exchange as the example. So if you do something called Office 365 um, or, or M365 or that version of, from Microsoft where you're, you're buying that software as a service, you're getting Exchange, your email. Microsoft manages everything for you. All your guys manage is the data that's going into your Exchange or your email environment. This allows them then to focus on rather than patching Exchange, updating Exchange, all of those things, that application, all they focus on is providing you the best service around mail. This gives the guys a lot more time to focus on what features are there, what new things can they they can can they they can roll out for the business, uh, rather than worrying about updating an environment. They don't worry about any of that. They just worry about the data itself. 
most organizations that are on this path of the cloud are ideally moving towards that SaaS model. They're trying to get as far down the, the path as they can towards software as a service, because that means that all they're focused then on is the data that's going in, which means that they've got a lot of time to focus on the business itself. So the other thing to consider is, is you know, the, the reality is, is that most organizations won't go fully cloud. Um, very few have gone cloud only. Um, I, there's there's some commercial organizations and some retailers that have looked at that and have moved down that path. Most of the organizations we deal with here at Phoenix um, have an on-premise environment uh, that they need to maintain. They might have some older kit, uh, legacy applications. So it's then become a hybrid. Uh, this idea that you're going to have uh, some on-premise stuff, uh, but you're also going to have some cloud stuff. Now, what this allows you to do as an organization is reduce the amount of stuff that you need on-premise, which then reduce those costs, uh, reduces that maintenance and that maintaining of those, those environments, uh, and put some of that stuff in the cloud, but you'll still have some on-premise stuff. Uh, and that's where most of our organizations, like I said, are going towards uh, and and quite happy with and will probably still maintain for the next few years around that. So this is just to give you a quick idea of some of the capabilities of the cloud. These are all very basic, uh, but it's just to give you an idea around, you know, disaster recovery, backup storage, dev and test, um, some of the back end applications like uh, your finance or, or your customer relationship database or things like that, your office applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, some platform services uh, and infrastructure. These are all different things that you can look at to use for the cloud uh, and that you can find some cost savings. You can find some different ways and benefits of using. So again, the benefits of the cloud, you're talking about time, confidence, and performance. So, uh, you know, it's flexible. You get uh, some cost savings techniques, some different things that you can turn off, turn on, um, and you get support, you get disaster recovery built in a lot of times. So there's a lot of benefits of taking a look at the cloud. Uh, it's not the silver bullet. It's not gonna solve all your problems, but what it will do is, is solve some problems uh, and it may actually give you a lot more capability to do things in the future that you wouldn't have with your current environment. Just to give you an idea of some of those capabilities, for Microsoft, this is their applications uh, that that are available within the cloud. Uh, now you can look at the infrastructure service, that's that uh, IaaS area, but above that is the platform area and you're getting things like artificial intelligence. You're getting things like internet of things. You're getting things like chatbots, uh, big data, security. All of this is uh, capable and built in as applications. Uh, your, your IT might talk about open source. This will give you an idea that Microsoft is quite uh, flexible and wants to work with open source organizations. And there's loads of different open source companies that they work with and continue to. Security is a big thing around cloud, um, obviously being that, you know, uh, organizations want to make sure you feel comfortable moving to the cloud. Uh, Microsoft takes that quite, quite serious um, and has developed quite a bit around the security levels um, uh, with things like Sentinel and some of the different things and really starting to push out uh, a lot of different security options to use both in-house, third party or uh, their own uh, security uh, capabilities and compliance. So again, this is all about making sure that you're compliant in these days. GDPR is a big, big issue. Um, and Microsoft spends a lot of time making sure that there's a compliancy across the board. So again, thanks for your time today. This was just a real brief overview of what the cloud is as a basics, um, but we'd love to talk to you more and we'd love to go through more with, with what you're trying to do. Uh, please get in touch. We've got several different programs, things like a Cloud 101 Workshop, uh, as well as um, Surveyor, as well as Fundamentals, that we can work with you on different levels, different ways to move towards the cloud and at least get you some information around what your environments may look like moving towards the cloud and what those costs could be for the business. So look forward to hearing from you and uh, thanks a lot for your time today.